Today I have the pleasure of speaking with both Jack Lipton and Alistair Neal, two of the world's top rare earths experts. So are you both ready? And of course today my intention is for you both to solve the issue of whether or not we can actually build a rare earth supply chain in North America. Okay, so Jack, how about we start with a yes or no from you and, and tell us what you think. Uh, yes, we can if the money is uh, put forth and the uh, all of the skills necessary are there and even uh, deposits are there. But in order, uh, the real trick here is if you want to have uh, the total rare earths that you need for, for example, rare earth permanent magnets, you're going to need more than is produced uh, in the United States. You need to have Canadian content and Australian content. So uh, this 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 issue is the base issue. Of course, the anchor of any supply chain are is the, uh, the raw material source. But the issue here is money. No one in the United States, uh, private or public, actually believes that that the United States could produce rare earth permanent magnets competitively priced with those produced in China. I happen to believe we can, but uh, I'm open to other opinions. So, Alistair, what do you think? Can we? I would agree with Jack that we can, but also uh, it does take, I think, people with vision and uh, likely some uh, backing and support because financially it's going to come down to having the money available. You know, historically, uh, there were magnet manufacturing facilities in the U.S., uh, notably MagnaQuench, which moved to China uh, in the early 2000s. And you had Hitachi, among others, already um, in place in the U.S. So it can be done. Uh, but again, it does come back to can you compete with the Chinese? Because in my experience, people are willing to buy from non-Chinese sources, but they're not willing to pay much, if any, premium uh, to be able to do so. Okay, well, I'm going to okay. add my three cents here. We've heard, Jack, you say money is the answer, correct? Yes. Okay, and of course, uh, uh, Alistair, you're talking about uh, the Chinese being the factor, correct? Correct. Okay, so I would like to just add that I believe it's the complexity of the problem. Every time I turn around, I read something new, it's, it's like I'm starting all over every single time. There seems to be an ongoing uh, cycle of misinformation and propaganda out there that makes the rare earth industry look so formidable that no one can solve the problem. So I'd like to get to the formula on how to solve it because I know you, both of you actually have the answer. But first let's just start with whether or not you agree on whether or not there are a lot of, uh, what do you call, fallacy and misinformation out there. And let's start, Jack, with what is your favorite uh, uh, gossip that you hear about rarest regularly that you have to uh, clarify? My favorite bit of, of misinformation is that the cost of separating rare earths is astronomical. And and even in the United States government, I hear all of the time why the Molycorp uh, Project Phoenix cost a billion dollars and the plant in um, Malaysia of uh, Linus, that was 600 or $800 million. Well, that's what it's going to cost. And I tell them, so you're planning to build a 20,000 ton separation system for what? Is that the market you're after? Well, they don't know the answer. They just know it's very expensive. These people are all, the U.S. could, if it had a 3,000 ton system, the military would be completely satisfied and there'd be stuff left over for the consumer market. And the cost of that would be a tiny fraction of the money that Molly Corp wasted and of the money that Linus spent because they were pioneers. Nobody ever built a plant that big, and they made a lot of mistakes. It works fine now, but it, at the beginning, it wasn't working so well. Alistair, what's your favorite piece of misinformation? Uh, that it's a mining business. Uh, that 
Mm. It's more to me, it's a specialty chemical business because uh, if you go back through the sort of the history of people getting into space in 2008 and so forth, uh, they came at it from a mining perspective, grade and tonnage. What they failed to recognize is really it's specialty chemical business. You customize the final products for the customer. And that takes a lot more effort and time and uh, knowledge to really be able to do that properly. So I think to me that's the biggest myth uh, that's out there. And of course, my favorite myth, I have several. One is uh, no two sources seem to know how many rare earths there are. That's one of my favorites. And of course, I love the fact that it's real easy to uh, extract these rare earths from 2,000 meters under the sea. So on that note, for everyone out there in Investor Intel, this is part one of a part three series where we're going to get you uh, ready to hit the ground running on rare earths. So gentlemen, thank you for joining us. You're welcome. Thank you.